Three days of Quake, 24 players, and it all comes down to this. Two players remaining, Kilson and Razy. Kilson coming in from the winner bracket to the grand finals. That means he'll have a one-map advantage. We'll break that down in just a second. Of course, Razy fighting his way, clawing his way, if you will, not only through his own teammates, but through an incredible pool of talent here to face off again versus Kilson, a rematch from the semifinals. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the end of it all. The winner is going to grab that belt behind Flea. Flea right there. there it is. <laughs> and uh, they will be the Season 3 Quake World Champion. Welcome back, Flea and Lethal. We've got quite a series ahead of us, as we mentioned, a rematch between these two during that Good game. Kilson took it 3 1 versus Razy. Uh, still pretty close, but Kilson looking pretty nice. Let's talk about these players. They're still going through their final picks and bans, so we should be getting there soon. But first, let's just go ahead and talk about these two. Yeah, I mean, they clearly deserve to be in the Grand yeah. Finals, right? I think there's no doubt about it. The two top competitors of the Quake World Championships are here duking it out for that beautiful belt right behind me. Well, Kilson has only dropped two maps, hasn't he? So, can't really complain in that department. He's been doing a phenomenal job throughout the entire process of his competition. The only shaky start he had was against Dan the King, and that was back at the start of day one, which is quite um, unheard yeah. of here. So, it just depends on whether Razy has the stamina to take it. It's not exactly a bracket reset or any of that kind of shenanigans. It has to do with that, obviously, one map advantage for Kilson. And I'm excited for this. It's hard to predict, and it gets to a point where Razy is used to this setup with the amount of second places he's sure. had, always coming from the loser's side. There's a amount of kills can just put a stamp of authority and just end it before Razy gets going. Yeah, so just to break it down, it's a best of seven, right? Uh, however, because Kilson fought his way through the winner bracket, as an advantage, he automatically gets that map one win. That then will be applied all over. Uh, so we start the matchup, basically Kilson up one to zero. Uh, now, you mentioned Kilson has been you know, pretty consistent in his play. He's fought a wide variety, a diverse set of talent here, only uh, losing that very first map to Dan the King. A lot of people are like, wow. I thought Kelson was number one seed, but he showed <laughs> us why he was number one seed. Had something to prove. And Razy, he's either going to be the Quake player who has had more second places in Quake Champions, or he's going to finally break that curse and become the new champion. Five second place finishes wheat within the history of the Quake Pro League. Razy has come so, so, so close time and time again. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride, but maybe today things will be different. I yeah. hope so for his sake. I think a lot of us have tried to predict how this is going to turn out, but we have absolutely no idea, do we? Even with that one map advantage, it doesn't really change the scenario here for Razy, because it's like I said before, not only is he used to this environment, he's used to being in this situation time and time again, and it's the hunger he's had it for. Like Flea's already mentioned, five second place finishes. How many more does he need? How many does he want to add to the collection? That's going to be obviously another question here coming into this grand finals. But yeah. is it it? Is this the time for Razy to finally come out on top? Yeah. You know, there is a, I don't know if you, you heard because Kilson did mention it, but uh, we, you know, a long time ago when Kilson won again, we talked a little bit about the idea of winning, making it to the grand finals, but then having to kind of stop playing, right? And this idea that you know, Razy or whoever it was that was fighting through, they got to stay warm and keep going. And it's like, yeah, it's it's a stamina run. There's endurance involved, but there also is some benefit to be to stay warm, to stay in that zone, to keep going. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily going to come into play. But let's just break down just real quickly for Razy. Other than not only fighting through the lower bracket, he did something else that was a pretty big accomplishment. He even said it right here, that it was something that he was wanting to break through, and that was to defeat Rafa. And he did so 3-2 in some incredibly close games. But it doesn't matter how close it was, you just got to be the winner. Uh, so, you know, how do you think that could factor into it? Like, do you think we saw a more complete, a solid, confident Razy after that matchup? 
Personally, I do think so. Yes, yeah. that really was a big confidence boost for him. We know that Rafa has been a bit of a roadblock in the past, right? They've been in the grand finals against one another several times, so him finally being able to take down that big boss must have really helped him moving forward, because after beating Rafa, he had to go up against his teammate, Wenger, yep. managed to take him down, then he had to go up against Max, who had been having a phenomenal tournament so far, yep. wiped him clean, 3-0, so Razy is absolutely on a roll right now. The only thing that worries me a bit, Weed, the endurance, the exhaustion, right? Best of five games back to back to back against some of the best players in the world, that gets to you. Yeah, yeah, it certainly does. And this is why a lot of these players, especially the top level, have been scrimming three or four times a day, not a week, a day leading up to it. But there's a difference between having the stamina to play all those screens and having the stamina in the tournament setting. It's an entirely different uh, court in general. So this is where we have to see if his stamina does kick in or not. But it's like you mentioned earlier, week with the fact that for Razy, he's already warm, he's ready, his aim score is going to be absolutely solid. And Kielsen, this is why I remember he needs to put a stamp of authority. He needs to really try and shut him yeah. down early if he can. Uh, what style are we going to see? Because we see multiple different styles coming out from Kielsen. But the problem is for him now is against a player who's adapting very well to all his opponents. So this is where things are going to shake up a little bit. Yep. Well, I just got note that picks and bans are ready. Keep in mind, too, because it's a best of seven, it means that, you know, there's no avoiding your worst map or, or this or that. And so we're going to see a lot. Kilson, he gets the win, quote unquote, on Veil. That means that the first or rather second map will be Awoken. Then we're going to go to Corrupted Keep. Uh, insomnia after that. I'm writing these down as I, that's why it's like I sound like an idiot right now. Deep Embrace <laughs> is going to be uh, Razy for the fourth map. Blood Covenant after that. And should we need to go to a final map, it will be Ruins. Now, other important aspect, of course, is going to be those champion picks. Poor Athena, we didn't get to see you at all during the finals day, but who wants to break these down for us? No clutch either. That stands out. We've yeah. seen Razy player yeah. for the or him for the very first time today. Other than that, starting off on Awoken, we're getting Nyx versus Anarchy, two very fast light champions. Then Strock versus Ranger on Corrupted Keep. Insomnia, the Death Knight, is going to face off against Slash. That's quite a contrast. Deep Embrace, Doomslayer versus Galena, Blood Covenant, Ison versus Visor, and then last but certainly not least, if we get to it, Sorlag versus Keel. I love how with Kielsen, he's banned Vale in almost every single match at bar one. And of course, coming from the winner's side, it gets the opportunity week. And of course, he bans Vale straight out, right? Which is yeah, not a surprise yeah. at all in the slightest. Sadly, won't see the Athena off the bat, which is perfectly understandable. But I'm going to agree with Flea here. The champion choices are quite meta, but the problem is anyone I'm quite unsure of and we haven't seen much of is the Death Knight we've seen a lot of that Insomnia but not the Slash which is a very interesting pick so yeah. it depends how experienced Kilson is in that matchup and I don't really see anything uh, coming out of woodwork in terms of anything too drastic even the final map between the Solag and the Kill we have seen it on rare occasions right. but it's not exactly a champion pick on that final map which heavily unfavors one person in particular that's right uh, I mean, uh, anything else that, you know, a flea that, that like sticks out that you're like, oh, this is this is kind of interesting that we could see that. I mean, um, definitely the DK slash comes into mind. Does everything mm -hmm. look pretty straightforward? Is there any is there any games there where you're like this one will be a tough one for Razy or this one might be a tough one for Kilson? Well, let's take a closer look. Galena versus Deep Embrace could be tough if Kilson gets into the flow of things. If he can maintain consistent control, those totems really aren't going to be that useful for Razy. But that is, of course, provided that Kilson is able to take them down consistently. Because right. if the tables are turned and things go the other way around, then those totems could really help him out. But on Deep Embrace, I would somewhat favor the Doomslayer. Other than that, really nothing all that special. Uh, Ruins of Sarnat, yeah, the two heavies, the tanks, they had to come out at some point, right? They have done their absolute best at avoiding them till the very final map. Keel, we've actually seen played on Ruins a decent amount, right? Yeah. There was a time yeah, where he was sure. really being picked consistently. Sorlag, not so much, though. 
Yeah, I'm, I don't know if you agree with this fleet, but the champion choices for Kielsen are actually quite heavily in his favour in these first few maps. For Nyx, he's been playing lights out with that champion, especially on Awoken, so this will give him a nice little advantage here and in that comfort zone. And Strog is so good on Corrupted Keep. The PK, the amount of damage you can do in more ways than one yeah. without that rail, it can be a very tough task. And Death Knight, again, on Insomnia, very difficult to contend with. So the Slash, I just find that such an interesting way to maybe try and avoid some the situations there. Doom, pretty uh, standard on Deep Embrace. And we don't see, obviously, a lot of Eisen on Blood Covenant. So I kind of feel like Razy does have a slight advantage with that yeah. piercing sight on the visor. But the sure. last one is just going to be interesting in itself. But it's not, again, a rarity. Like, Kill isn't a bad pick on Ruins. We've seen it on very rare occasion. It has worked out for some of these players. Yeah. And with the map advantage that Kilson gets from being in the upper bracket, the upper bracket winner, uh, you know, one thing that comes into mind, too, is momentum. Right, it, it is in any case, right, we rarely see things like reverse sweeps coming in. So obviously a win for Kilson automatically puts him in, in that first map, automatically puts him in a great position moving forward, which means that that pressure on Awoken is really on Razy's shoulders, right? To try yeah. to stop that short and equalize thing in that first map. And I really would not be surprised if Kilson gets that first win. I, I, I mean, yeah. Anar An Anarchy is, is a good pick. Anarchy yeah. is a good pick. Let's, but let's be clear about it. Is worth training, training, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so many of these top players kind of have like their signature champion, yeah. right? For Razy, of course, it's Clutch, which is extremely difficult to use on land. So we haven't seen the robot played all that often. But Kilson's go to champion, the one that he is so famous for having mastered, is of course Nyx. And that is immediately what he's coming out of. So he's not pulling his punches, right? Flying yeah. out of the gates. That's going to be a difficult one for Razy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I mean, I don't even. I, I respect these two both so much. Do we even? Do we de even do predictions? Maybe we just leave it up to chat right now. Like this is your <laughs> moment to spam. Yep. Use those channel points that you've undoubtedly. There's got to be some channel point millionaires out there after <laughs> some of the matches that we have had today. A hundred percent. So whether you are out there supporting Kilson or supporting Maestro and Razy or Big and Kilson, like spam it right now. I hope that I'm not getting people banned right now. But uh, <laughs> now's the time to show your support and thank you for being along for the ride all weekend long. It has been absolutely phenomenal. We've said it time and time again, but I'll repeat it one more time. It's definitely been one of the best tournaments that we've seen at Quake Champions just apart from the way that the game is developed, the, the talent that we have here, the challengers coming in and making such a significant impact on things, uh, that even new, new blood. I mean, I remember a couple years ago, we were like, oh, yeah, it's really interesting. We have all this new blood, like Wenger and Razy, and they're going up again. <laughs> and now we have, like, another set. Suddenly, Wenger, Razy, these guys are, they are getting upgraded now. Veteran status, they've been winning, they've been doing performing very well. Now we have some potential, you know, some new challengers, literally. We actually really do, right? There's just yeah. so many new names. Strong Sage, Yup, a whole bunch of those new challengers. Also recurring names, right? Huron, for example, yeah, yeah. Toxic. All of these really, really big veterans in the scene that haven't quite been with the Quake Pro League for the entirety of its duration, but are now really making a comeback. Yeah. yeah. Been very, very impressed with every single player in challenges. Even seeing the likes of Proximo again and Buxter, these names who we haven't really been too familiar with uh, in recent times and seeing them coming back like Tox, like you said, been around for so many years. And it just proves with the new bloods and new players coming in, but it doesn't matter how much veteran experience uh, some of the players have. It's all about the hunger and the drive to try and either catch up and even if not overtake all these players, which we've seen it time and time again. Like, you know, look at Razy. He was a good example years back coming into it now. Look at Wenger now, 19 plus four at this stage coming in and just, you know, doing a good job of himself already. So I'd love to see it. love to see more of it, of course, with the uh, new players coming into the scene. But in terms of the challenges and everyone coming for the qualifiers, every single one of them deserve to be here and causing upsets left, right and center. Yeah. Uh, we're just giving the players a few more moments to kind of gear up, get ready. Once we hop into it, it's probably going to be uh, pedal to the metal. Uh, quick, uh, from both of you, any, like, games, moments uh, that, that just stand out as some of your favorite uh, of the tournament? Uh, Rafa Razy. 
was an incredible series. Any specific moments, I would have to give a bit of a throwback to CNC versus Dramas. There was that one moment where CNC just somehow survived for two minutes into overtime, came down to one HP, not once, but twice, literally one HP, and somehow turned it around. Excellent defensive, masterclass on out of control play, and, and he managed to win the map. Didn't go on to win the series, but that was an extremely hype moment. Yeah. Probably Rafa Zeniku for me. That last flick shot with a shotgun, it's just the way Rafa said it, it's like, played it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. He did. And he that's did. the worst thing about it. He, he was, did. I swear, okay, it's on LAN, etc., and, and obviously damage uh, can be a bit different, but. He must have been like almost perfectly in that blast radius to get that much damage done. It was just incredible. And just so many other players in the scene, like Sirius, everyone was talking about his aim skill and he yeah. probably had the best aim in this tournament. Everyone's going, oh, he's not going to do it on land. Well, he just clearly did like for like the first two days and he was just lights out incredible. And if that kind of player starts adapting more with that dueling experience, he's going to be another very scary player depending on that consistency. Yeah, I, I would absolutely agree with you on on the Zanaku uh, versus Rafa matchup. Like I, I, my jaw dropped for those one rare moments. I'm like speechless for a little bit uh, because looking through Zenaku's eyes, for me, I was like, wait, how that this doesn't compute. It, it looked like the LG had him dead to rights, but uh, it was quite amazing. Now, then we got to see, of course, the perspective coming from Rafa, and it's like, okay, it makes a lot more sense. But if I was Zenaku at that moment, I, I understood how he must have uh, must have felt, you know. And then, uh, you know, day one, we, we definitely saw, I mean, uh, other notable stories. We obviously maxed her, but chain kind of having his second yeah. comeback if you will and the big question i think uh, as we you know continue on is okay like we we've been here before where we've said wow chain there there's something here look keep an eye on him will he be able to keep that momentum going on there it does seem like this was the tournament where something sort of clicked for him I mean, he said it himself, right? He came as close to what he considered perfection for his own playstyle as he could achieve. I just hope that he's able to, you know, allot enough time to continuing his practice regimen, going into the future for Quake Champions, right? Because, yeah, he said it himself, during much of the season, I really hadn't much of an opportunity to practice, to grind, to really get into top shape. It is only towards the end, and we could tell that that paid off in dividends, right? Yeah. Just the shape that he came out swinging here, excellent. He ended 11th out of 13th of players in the Quake Pro League, and then he made it so far. Yeah. And uh, Kron, 23rd seed, top yeah. eight. Yep. Yeah. D yeah. Don't need to say anything else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, brought definitely a unique style to things. Uh, there, I, I believe it was it was Ron and and Toxic that had the 10 minute overtime, right? Yeah, breaking, and breaking I'm not the record. That. Yep. Of, yeah, you were casting that, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. Actually, we were talking about it, and we felt like the longest overtime we'd seen up to that point was about nine minutes. So broke it by about a minute and it a half. It was only one nil. It was actually zero zero. Yeah, it was zero, twenty zero. minutes and forty yep. seconds. Yeah. It's mad. Uh, that was uh, it, and was probably one of the slowest but most meticulous games that I'd seen on Blood Covenant. And I felt like after that game. Every game on Blood Covet seemed to slow down and be more of that long range battle versus, uh, you know, what we have seen in the past. So, uh, Kilson versus Razy is just moments away. It looks like the match has been found and we're going to go in. I don't know if we can generate enough applause in here for these two guys, but they both deserve it. So, good luck, you guys. Oh, I love uh -oh, that. Uh -oh, <laughs> eyes, uh -oh, eyes from Kilson. Uh -oh. He's ready to take it, isn't he? He is uh, ready to go. We're loading into our first map, or actually, I'm gonna correct. We're loading into our second map. Kilson is up one to zero. The map is Awoken. It's gonna be Kilson's Nyx versus Razy Anarchy. I'm gonna cast this first map with Lethal. Lethal, it's been great all weekend. Uh, casting with, with the whole crew. Shout out to 40 Lions too. He couldn't be here, but held down the B stream the whole weekend. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate that uh, solid effort on his side. And we can't wait to see you next time. And uh, warm up is counting down. Good luck, have funds being exchanged. And we are officially live here for the grand finals of the season three Quake World Championship. We saw how good Kilson's Nyx was earlier on and Awoken. Let's see if it will bring that style forward. And now. Still holding top mid just a tad. Just find those tribots to see if you can get any more information on Teresi. Doesn't get enough. 
but knows Razor can be around that proximity. Is now 20 seconds in. Mega's up in the next few seconds. Razor's actually going to try and attempt to go for the same item, or at least contest it enough to put Kielsen away. Drops down, knows exactly where his opponent's at. Obviously, Ghostwalk going to come into play here. Crazy with that inject, should it be needed. And I am not surprised to see a slow start here to what is going to be a long series. You know, you got to keep gas it. in the tank. <laughs> so uh, might as well uh, play it as slow and as intelligently as you possibly can. Of course, it's, again, both of them using the same defensive style or reactive style, you could say, as they use it against Maxter. But now they're just using it on each other. Of course, this is the higher echelon in terms of the tier of skill we're witnessing right now. Both of them just taking every decision with a lot of caution. And I like that from Kielsen, faking that nail jump as well to pretend he think he top mid, but now nah, still got the ankle on that heavy. Razzy just sitting there waiting. Got the info he needs now, backing away, got the Mega, and actually decides to lay it only a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've talked about throughout the tournament, like there can be some danger in delaying it too much. If you lose a battle, you can basically hand control to your opponent, but you know, working it a little bit, especially uh, given he's on Nyx, I, I, I kind of, like I get why he's going to do that. Um, and this is uh, going to be a slow start. Now, someone's like, this doesn't look like a grand finals. It's so slow. <laughs> but you have to imagine what is on the line for both of these. You know, Kilson yeah. looking for a championship that's eluded him for quite a while. Razy does not want to be the king of second place any longer. There's so much on the line, not only the belt, but the prize money, of course, the status, and, and just the fact that you can call yourself season three champ. So Heavy will be coming up first, and it does mean Kilson may have a chance to contest it if he gets it just a couple of seconds after that Heavy. Kilson now just waiting for him to pop on down, but Razy just playing little mind games at the moment. As Razy does hit the first wave, hits two in the end, and this way kills has got to be a little bit careful. He was second-guessing whether he should continue to contest that Mega, decided to back away, does hit the first wave, uses the Ghost Walk on top of that, and could be chasing him down. Not going to chase him heavily, but at least get some height advantage, but that was a very important rail there, but nice. Razy responds with one of his own. Coming straight on Ooh. up, 19 HP, kills him, look at his oh life, and Razy comes out with that shoddy. I mean, he knew that he did a significant amount of damage, to go back up that jump pad, uh, but the amount of respect that we saw there too, that ghost walk popped almost immediately by Kilson after that rail. Neither wants to be given up mistake or an inch, and oh, Kilson actually blowing himself up as he goes in for the attack on the Mega. That means now Razy up by two after getting that first frag. Yeah, Razy looking very confident, took a huge risk going up that Mega jump pad earlier on, but it seemed to pay off is currently up minus one to one Razy not going for the tp as of yet kills and just holding that advantageous position as Razy almost caught him with that last rail still got the heavy huge stack to work with of course kills does have that ghost walk don't get me wrong it's coming up with the lg uses the ghost walk straight away and of course Razy needs to keep an eye on the pattern wow. he uses for the hourglasses wow. he caught him off straight away back to back rails he knew what route he was going to take and caught him with his trousers down yeah, want negative one to two now as Chilson needs to crawl his way back to at least a zero, obviously, to start climbing this mountain. Four minutes in, and we are seeing some surgical rails come out lethal. Uh, both players look to be incredibly warm right now. And, you know, I think we're already seeing a different series than what we saw earlier when they faced off. Not wrong at all. Razy just biding his time once again. And we're closing to the halfway stage. Razy with that free frag lead. As they both have their abilities, but Razy is going to be ready for it. But Kielsen, good rocket from him as he jumps on down. Razy used the inject straight away and was considering going for the TP, but Kielsen just dives nice. in straight away. Beautiful nice. rockets, beautiful read as well. And is almost going to type himself. But even if Razy gets taken out, at least he burned the heavy away from Kielsen. He did. He did do some damage too, but that was the thing that was going to allow Kilson to bring it back. So he's got to be feeling good being above zero and only a one point game being five minutes in. We talked about the importance of this game and how it could set the momentum considering that Kilson already has a map win going into this. Now, because it's a best of seven, 
you need four maps to be the winner. That means that uh, Kilson basically has to win three in order to grab that belt and be champion. Razy needs four. And you can see both players played it very slow to begin with. Now both players are trying to fight towards that aggression, trying to dictate the pace and the tempo of this matchup. Now it's Kilson's turn for the first time in this matchup with a huge stack. Razy just trying to see if Kilson's still lurking around Tom Mid, which of course did manage to find, but an aggressive ghost walk here could be able to catch him. And you can see Razy preemptively Ooh. used that injured just in case that happened. Ooh. And that was a good return rail there from Razy. Doesn't hit the second, but he's done enough to keep Kilson away. Yeah, and he knows the ghost walk is down. LG's gonna come out and we're gonna have it answered here. Very, very close, both players low. and. It is Razy who gets the frag with that one. Nice done. Some great decision making coming out by both of these players. Really making sure if they are going to be aggressive or they are going to go for it, they can hopefully close it out. And that LG battle, it was Razy who got the better of it. Certainly did indeed. Kilson hasn't got all the weapons in his arsenal as of yet. Still pick up LG, which he will do now. And Razy. Oh, I like that. Just back himself away. Faker picks out, but he's got that aggressive ghost walk. But in the end, Razy does pick Ooh. up that Mega. So, Kilson had a plan. As he's trying to get around and still has that injured, remember. But Razy looking for the bit of armor. I mean, this truly is Quake Chess right now. As neither player wants to give up any pieces, knowing that everyone is going to be important. Let's get that king. Seven minutes now on the clock. Three minutes left to go. Great rail coming out from Razy. Immediately answered by that inject. Oh my gosh, down to one. Lands the rail, but Kilson with the LG is going to make it two to three. And gets one step closer to tying this game up. Again, he did manage to burn that heavy. So not giving Kilson a lot of leeway after yeah. that. Wasn't the cleanest of frags, of course. And Razy just looking to try and stay alive. But... Focus on Kilson for now, as he's gone back towards top mid to pick up that light. Now just rotating around to see where Razy could be. But of course, prioritizing that heavy will be uncontested due to the fact that Razy definitely doesn't have to stack to contend. Yeah, he does. And wants to go for any bounce at the moment. It's where that, that scary moment where that rail can be the end of you. And Jack coming out yet again, looking for that light in the back hallway. Been waiting for that one for a while. And... Both players slowing it down. Razy knowing with this one frag lead, if he does not give Kilson the opportunity, he might have a chance to take and tie this series up. But Kilson, he knows what's on the line. He knows that he's going to have to get aggressive at some point to try to bring this one back, at least to tie potentially for the win. Rail as he drops down, Razy does hit it. Ghost Walk does come out. Mega's picked up. Razy's going to go around. Great exit, Rail. Coming out. And then Jack's back up. And I love these aggressive ghost walks as well. Even if he doesn't get the frag, a chip damage enough to try and clean him up later on, but he can't fight this any further. He hasn't drawn down for the light because, of course, this spot is extremely risky for any player. And now he's going to go back towards that choke point onto the Mega. But look and see if he can catch Razor. He doesn't, but look at the stack of Razy here. We is now still hasn't got the inject for a while. Only just used it recently. And he's looking to do his best to stay alive. One minute left remaining. Kielsen will have another ghost walk in hand to use aggressively to try and catch Razy. But it depends if Razy will be far back enough depending on the range he's at. Yeah, there it is. Ghost walk coming out. Going to go into the armor room. Does see his opponent. Drops down. Lands or Does not land the rail. Misses the second shot as well. 40 seconds left on the clock. Both players looking good. Ready for a battle. Kilson needs to win, try to win it clean, and then potentially try to get an additional frag or let it force itself to sudden death. You can see Razy is now in a defensive mode. 20 seconds left. Kilson needs to go on the attack. There it is. Rocket coming out. Does land the rail. Is going to go ahead and chase it down. Rail back out again through the teleporter. 10 seconds remaining. One rail is landed, going up that jump pad. LG does come out. Ghost walk once again, three, two, one on the end. Doesn't have the rail shot and a one point 
game for our second match, and we are already tied 1-1. And you saw that as well. With the timing of that Ghost Walk, he wouldn't have been able to do enough damage in any way with any weaponry to tie things. I think he had about three or four seconds left, so wouldn't have given him the opportunity, but I liked that from Razy. That was a great spot. Standing on the tri bolt error, using that LG to make sure just to keep him away and just waste as much time as possible and waste down the clock. Yeah, just like you said, Weed. It's been reset, right? It's the one reset. map advantage that Kilsen had coming from the upper bracket has already been lost and Razy is now on perfectly equal footing to his opponent. Yeah. Now, I mean, from, uh, and there's that first frag, that was pretty big. Going up that jump pad, that was Razy saying, I'm gonna take a risk here to take the lead and it paid off, but you could have seen how that could have easily gone uh, either way. Now, I think one of the bigger things about that map win is that Nyx is off the table now, right? That was, uh, that yeah. what we yeah. were even saying, like, uh, that could be a tough one. I do think Razy chose to slow it down, try to force the game to be uh, played on uh, you know, at his tempo. Uh, Kilson did try some aggressive ghost walks to change it up a little bit, but ultimately Razy takes it by just a single frag. Yeah, it was a real struggle, wasn't it, Flea, just looking at that, mm -hmm. because Kilson is very, very good on the Knicks, but the problem is Razy would preemptively sometimes use the inject if he's getting chased upon or chased behind. So these little minuscule plays here and there, which Kilson realized that he couldn't take advantage of compared to what he did to his other opponents, was just unbelievable. But even some other uh, small detail, like just burning the heavy on those two occasions so that Kilson wouldn't have a huge stack to continue contesting the mega straight afterwards. Little things like this is starting to add up, but you you're right though, it is one apiece, and Kielsen now will be feeling a little bit more pressure now he hasn't got that advantage anymore. Yeah. I think Razy's map awareness was just exquisite. Just knowing how the game was going and then using that injection, like you mentioned, to avoid those ghost walks, right? Weed, you said it yourself. There were a handful of occasions where Kilson used that ghost walk aggressively, but it's, it rarely amounted to much. And that is right. just because Razy is so aware of that. He like he can almost tell that it's going to happen and he realizes, wait, this would be the perfect opportunity for an aggressive ghost walk. I'm just going to juke him out, go down here through a teleporter, use the right. injection. And even if he just used it to try and catch me or cut me off, it's not going to work. And very often, he had the right idea. Now, I think what's interesting, if you look at not just the next map, Corrupted Keep, but the next three maps, what you've got here is Corrupted Keep, traditionally a bit faster paced map. Things can slow down on Insomnia. That's going to be up to the players, but that could be and play out a little bit more like Awoken did. But then going back to Deep Embrace, what we're going to see is these players kind of be forced into a faster pace, maybe a little bit slower pace, faster mm. pace, because it's harder to slow down on Corrupted Keep. It's harder to slow things down on Deep Embrace. So that will be interesting to see how the players will adjust to those particular uh, maps and uh, I would say the tempo in which they're normally played. Yeah, and it's on crap to keep heavily relying on your mechanics and your fundamentals and just being able to just outplay your opponent in multiple different ways now that the rail is not involved. And with the Strog, we know how difficult it is to deal with that peak around that rail. On so many times, people take so much damage, but at least with the Ranger, you can at least get a huge amount of damage done in one place or catch your opponent, which is probably what Raze is going to have to do due to the ability and speed of that Strog. You also have to be extra careful using the peaker when you're up against the Ranger, right? right. Because we've seen right. it happen several times. Yeah. We've Someone thinks they're safe, they pop the peaker, or Ranger Orb flies straight on, straight yeah. on by Rodder, <laughs> up in your face, and before you know it, you're done while you're sitting there in stasis. That's so that right. adds another element to this equation. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that work both ways, right? Yeah. So it's not always a surefire, but it absolutely is something. You've got to be pretty certain. Uh, now, I believe it was Avic actually played Corrupted Keep Strog in one of his matchups and just had some remarkable execution when it came to the peaker, always making sure that as he was moving, he was putting his, his, his self in positions where it was going to be next to impossible for them. Tate had to deal with the peaker, and I think obviously Kilson needs to do that right here. So we're now jumping into our third map, tied one apiece. GLHFs are uh, announced and flee. This is uh, going to be an interesting one. I wonder if we might see a, like a forced fast pace here, depending on just how this first few minutes unfold. 
expecting things to open somewhat slowly. Usually when it comes to Corrupted Keep, either you have one player just rushing off the spawn, right? right. They pick up Super Shotgun, just straight up rush into the room with their Orbat already. But if that doesn't happen, things typically tend to see a slower start, and that's yeah. exactly what we're getting right now. Yeah. Both players looking to delay the items a fair bit. Ultimately, Kilsen is the one to pick it up the latest, so there's around six seconds between the Mega and the Heavy. Yep, you kind of divide a line across the map and say, you yep. stay over there, I'm gonna stay right over here, and let's uh, let's do the dance. But, of course, that line starts to dissolve as the game goes on. However, both players still holding onto their side. Now, Kilsen looking for an opportunity to come in, raising up top, throws out the orb, does make Kilsen at least look over there. Now, uh, not a whole lot of damage, not much of a yield out of that, but still manages to grab that heavy. Kilson very quick on just sending the peeker to its doom, right? He figured that he was in a vulnerable spot. If Razy just jumps clean down, he can take that damage and get an unpredictable shot in on him. Now, Razy still lacking the lightning gun. That is the one component that yeah. he's still missing, and it is so dangerous to go for it. Look, oh. he makes a move. Kilson is at the ready. Yep. Yeah. That was what Kilson had been playing for that opening 90 second suite, hoping that Razy would have to overextend into picking up that item or that weapon, rather, which he had been denying and ultimately Razy gets a hold of it, but he pays the ultimate price. Yeah, Razy also has to kind of burn the orb in order to put himself in a position to guarantee yeah. that he's going to get that heavy, which, you know, some might say, why would you waste the orb like it? But I think that heavy was worth grabbing at this point. The line is drawn again across the map, but to your point, Razy still not without an LG. So I don't know if that is a strategy that you can maintain for 10 minutes, but Kilsen knows uh, that his options are limited without that LG, that he can do a few things that Razy can't. Now the upside for Razy is that that frag happened at a moment where there was no opportunity really for Kilsen to chain both of the items together. So he was able to pick up Mega, but Razy had the heavy to fall back on. But, oh, oh wait, what? Is he just sneaking on by? He just did it! He did. Kilson was still realized. I was still on Kilson's point of view. He was looking straight at the heavy. He had no idea that Razy was just crouch walking underneath him, stole away wow. the mega. And now he looped around for heavy as well. Yeah, threw out the orb, didn't manage to take it, or just chose not to take it, but then somehow gained control here. He's gonna pick up those hourglasses as well. And I would say that was definitely a pretty good bamboozle there. Did the uh, whole Metal Gear Solid, got inside a cardboard box and managed to sneak away. Great LG coming out there, at least to do a little bit of damage, but Kilson with the majority of that damage on his side. Orb does come in, he decides to take it to grab that heavy. Some risky moves here, but they're paying off for Razy. I have to say, very little respect given by Razy, and that was also obvious from the start of Awoken. We, there were some very gutsy pushes from yeah. both of these players, and now Razy just orbing right on top of the item, even though Kills is holding down the angle. Oh, gets caught by surprise there, though. Oh, if that rocket would have hit, that would have been obviously completely different, but giving Kilson the opportunity. Crazy though, even though he's been in some uh, situations that haven't necessarily played on his advantage, he's recovered nicely from those. Kilson though, still doing the damage. Now Orb is up, Peeker is up, four minutes on the clock. It's been a little bit slower version mm -hmm. of Corrupted Keep, but what we're seeing is an incredibly strategic an intelligent way to play this map. Still a one frag lead for Kilson. He's got the setup on the heavy as well, but Razy, omnipresent, looking to apply pressure wherever possible. And now Kilson trying to take a page out of his opponent. Oh, just look at these tiny little gaps. It's oh, beautiful man. what these players have managed to uncover on these maps. No nook or cranny left unturned. So much walking as well taking place here, but that's that's okay. Being stealthy, not letting their opponent know where they are. Looking for that heavy once again. Lots of damage coming up from the LG by Razy. Kilson now going to need some health, but Kilson now above his opponent. Razy can only take the jump pad. What is he going to decide to do? Comes around. Still a little bit early. Peeker does come out. Now Kilson knows exactly where his opponent's at. He can't escape through that teleporter, but instead's just gonna back up and set up for that head. Oh nice. no! Good play by Kilson. 
baiting Razy yeah. into a false sense of security, giving him the impression that Gilson just made a move and a play for the heavy, but no. He was just sitting pretty, waiting for Razy to go up that bounce path. Very calculated and good read by Kilson. Orb is still up. Peek or not, still 10 seconds. He heard him right above him. He's getting a lock on him. He sees exactly where he's at. Does fire the rocket, doesn't happen, but... Oh, Kilson oh. did not get that. There's an opportunity for him. Orb does go out, but Razy not willing to risk the situation there to try to go for the frag as he took a significant amount of damage himself. Will recover, though, by grabbing that heavy. Now there is an opportunity here, but what? Razy's just, he's not going to take the opportunity unless he knows for certain that it will result in the frag. This is going to push in LG on LG, mega spawns for Kilson. Oh, another one. Gilson knocked back oh. down. Peeker comes out, but he cannot get escape. No, no way. No escape for you, says Razy. This might be the start of a consistent rotation. Weed, yeah, he took a fair bit of damage, but he's got heavy and there's plenty of health bubbles to work with. If he can avoid taking too much damage in this fight, Razy might establish full control. And knows that Peeker's going to be down for a little bit, so options limited by Kilson. We're tied 1-1. One, one. Orbs up. Rocket on the exit. It does not manage to hit. Ooh, rocket jump, missed rocket jump. And those are not the type of things you want to do. Even though it's a little bit of damage, it's still can hurt. And going down on top of that heavy, does grab it going through. I also forget Rangers, or Razy's Rangers, so it's not, it's not big of a deal. <laughs> that almost went wrong for Razy. That orb, yeah, yeah. perhaps a little too transparent. Gilson got into position perhaps a second sooner than he anticipated. He ate a lot of LG damage there. I think he was lucky to escape right there, and now he's kind of paying the price. Stack significantly lower than his opponents. He needs to land these good rockets. That's one, oh. that's two. Oh, he's dropping down. He went for it, did manage to take it away. Has to be careful, avoid that LG, and will take that back ledge to grab the health. But stole away the heavy, didn't really walk away with much armor. I like what Kilson's doing. He's been doing an excellent job at denying those small armors, yeah. making it so that Razy only has the heavy to rely on. But every time that Razy takes away the heavy, Kilson's there to punish him for it. <laughs> Big peeker as well. Oh, but that relaxation oh. rocket. Kilson had an opportunity if it wasn't for that rocket. Or is up. There is the light steel. And less than two minutes left to go. And neither player wants to give an inch flea. Absolutely not. Let's take a look at the statistics. Item pickups heavily favoring Razy right now, but the damage, the damage is going in the direction of Kilson. A lot of mind games here, just in terms of making noise one way, switching directions, going back, trying to fake out his opponent. Razy now, middle doors on the top. Is he gonna rotate around right behind his opponent? Kilson most certainly heard that rocket's gonna drop on top of that Meg is in a good spot right now with his stack. Does have orb up, it's gonna head over to the heavy. Wow. One minute left to go, and we may be going into overtime here. Sure is looking likely based on how these two champions have been playing. See what Razy can do. They're slow playing it. Kilson knows that if he goes up the bounce pad, he's in such a vulnerable position. Razy spots that rocket, knows exactly where his opponent is at. I like what Kilson's doing, trying to position himself between Razy and the next item, trying to catch him off maybe with a good burst of LG or heavy machine gun. Ooh. These orbs are risky though, Weed. If that lands in just the wrong spot, Kilson gets a nice burst of LG, one solid rocket. LG on LG. Yeah, this could settle it. Oh! oh wow! <laughs> And it was a risky orb, but it allowed him to grab that heavy, have the stack to go in and even force a battle like that. And Razy is going to pull it out, suddenly taking the lead two to one after that very, very low scoring game. Dan now joining us on. Yeah, right? Just like, in time. 
even though very, very slow, any tiny mistake, especially at that speed, can also be a disaster. Yeah, you can see both players completely unwilling to commit to any fight that might cause any sort of chaos just in case that situation happens. But at any one point in time, if you push the initiative, the chaos happens and Razy came out on top this time. We've seen two maps now separated by one score frag. We've seen, what, five frags from, from Razy across two maps? That's pretty much unheard of, but it's just the level they're playing at that they're unwilling to take a bigger risk in it unless they have absolute certainty in what they're playing on. Yeah, absolutely. That was a very slow, calculated game of chess within the realm of Quake, as you put it earlier, Reed. 51% LG by Kilsen versus 33 by Razy. And if you just look at the damage, right? Kilsen significantly out damaging his opponent, but Razy had such good control of the items. Latched onto a rotation around halfway through the map. Didn't fully run it through till the end, of course, but had still control for most of that period. Yeah, we're going to be moving on now to Insomnia, where Kilson's going to be on the DK and Razy on the Slash. Uh, if you recall the earlier interview that we did before the tournament, and Razy said, yeah, man, Slash is pretty sweet. I like this champion. Now, Insomnia, that's the big question mark here. I've seen, we've seen DK on, on Insomnia, yeah. uh, but also this is a map that had been taken, you know, the back seat for a lot of this season. It's uh, certainly a map that these two have practiced and played. It's not like uh, they're going to get lost on it, but uh, certainly not the most comfortable of what we've got in the pool. No, and what we saw from the uh, the seasonal stage in Anyhow was that Kilson was a little bit more comfortable. He was generally the one playing it. And in my opinion, it suits his style very nice. You have that clear ledge, that clear area around the upper heavy, just to play slow, play with the rail. We've seen it earlier. Max are doing it to perfection up against uh, Wenger, I believe. That's a play style right. Kilson likes. Mm -hmm. And to, to force him out of there as a slash without the stack, that's hard. And then you're getting bumped all over the place with a really rocky map that you can't even get the speed up anyway. I'm going to be really interested to see how Razy plays this one out, because if he runs in with no stack, gets blown up by a fire strike, it might be over at 1-0. We've seen low score games. Absolutely. But on the other hand, if Razy can get the lead and hang on to it, he's going to be so difficult to catch. I, Dan and yeah. I, we were just talking about it off stream. No player can just stop moving the way Razy can. He can absolutely just position himself somewhere, his enemy will know where he is, and he will just stop. And he'll just stand still. He says, if you're going to come from the left, I'm going to run right, and vice versa. And he will just hold on to that without budging an inch. So if that happens, Insomnia is a map that allows for that. What I will say is that this map, I haven't seen a slash on it, seems really difficult to actually play yeah. the items with a slash, right? Like, you can't speed in, steal away the heavy. Right. You can't speed in, steal away the mega. You actually have to fight. So this is tricky. I, I, I would agree. Um, it's, it's a tough one to visualize how this might play out. I mean, certainly, I think it's pretty easy with the DK to go, yeah, I, I, I can see how this will play. Yeah. I mean, Flame Strike seems uh, quite good here in this situation. So it also should be said that you know, Kilson needs to bring this back again, right? He doesn't want to leave Razy with a uh, potential game point if he were to win this one. So, no, absolutely uh, not. And these two have a history, you know. So, right, there, there is there is a world where Razy's starting to get into Kilson's head a bit, um, and so keeping rational, keeping calm is also part of the equation. This is a one-on-one -on -one game after all, where the mental game is probably just just important. It's not more important than skill level, so. Yeah, it's it's kind of fascinating because, you know, Kilson slowed it down a little bit for Maxter, slowed it down a little bit for Razy, and now Razy kind of answering that call, and Kilson might need to be the one who goes a little aggressive to try to mix things up a bit. I would agree, and so far we've seen that. He's stolen away the heavy, did he do a lot of damage yep. for that, but now he's in position for the Mega, he's limiting the resources for Razy, and I definitely agree. I think we've seen a bit of a stalemate at the moment in the first two maps. I want to see more aggression from Kilson. Ready? Take the game to this slash. You're not going to catch him, no, but you can bully her off the map. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be those opening rails that will be really big, especially for Kilson, right? I mean, just look at Razy's stack by comparison. Yeah. One rail, 
So I, I don't know, care how fast you go. Eventually, you're going to get choked out of potential health and armor resources, and it's, it's going to just be a battle of attrition to the point where Kilson will ultimately win that one. So I tend to favor him uh, and this champion pick a little bit more than what we see out of Razy, but that hasn't stopped players in the past. No, we can always see the, the trepidatious nature of Razy evacuating the area whenever his opponent shows face. He's built the starting stack, so that's okay. But as you've pointed out, the stack difference otherwise is huge. Razy's setting up a trap here. Kilson actually jumps into it. The flame strike comes out, doesn't do a thing. Coming up a second time with the rocket jump. He knows how important these items are. He does take it away, but as you can see, priority for Kilson, keep control of those items. A, B, C. Raze doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Now he doesn't even have that starting stack either, so he's definitely not going to show an inch to Kilson. The walk key has never it's been used walk. more. <laughs> no, it's going to be broken <laughs> soon. <laughs> this matchup, two minutes, 15 seconds on the clock. And, you know, you might have someone tune in and say, what is going on? I saw the most just brutal, aggressive matches today. And honestly, there's a lot of things you can break down from this. First off, respect from both of these players, knowing how deadly their opponent is. Hold on, we got a surprise. Wow. And that was huge by Kilson. The game, the set, the trap, it was big. Razy now gonna pick up that aggression a little bit. Land two nice rockets as Kilson's trying to convert off this one and give himself a potential lead in the game. And that's that's how it can explode right there, Dan. All it takes is that moment. And this time it was Kilson who stopped and slowed it down, saw an opportunity for that burst damage, and was able to capitalize on it. Yeah, absolutely right. Raise you like, raise you like a book. And the problem for me as he walks in again is the fact that Razy's strategy so far has been avoid conflict. He's taken one major item in the game game. How does he get into this oh. one unless he uh, tries to bait Kilson into overextending, which is a hard task at the best of times. And Kilson continues to rotate the items and doesn't let Razy even have a sniff of them. So it's difficult to see what the game plan is for Razy as he's been struggling with stacks, struggling to find damage but he's gonna have to before this game is over. Yeah, and I kind of feel like Kilson now, three minutes in this, he's figured out like, okay, I, I've kind of got a game plan here, right? Like I've got a significant stack advantage. I've got control. If I land a single rail or catch my opponent while I've got this flame strike, then I'm gonna be in a real good spot. He yeah. keeps that up. Even if you were to get a one, two frag lead, you know, you. I think it was you mentioned like Slash is, it, you know, able to get some speed on this one. There's the rail. Is it going to open up an opportunity? Well, that caused Razy almost to go into panic mode to slow down behind that column, and it works out perfectly. LG by Kilson. Four minutes, 20 seconds in. He's up by two. Yeah, and it's it's really rough for Razy, if I'm completely honest. That's the first item he's trying to take since the first time in the game, and he got punished for punished, it. Punished, yeah. Like, he's feeling kind of worthless. You can see him looking at the angles, trying to work it out, but it, anytime Kilson makes a move, it's more about Razy retreating than really trying to punish that. Doesn't see him drop down, but he'll know where he's coming from now. He's going to peek over. He needs to contest, and I think this is what he has to do. He doesn't have anything to work with, but you need to take that risk. The fire strike comes out from Kilson, and that is the sign for Razy to leave. Oh. He goes up, but what a rocket to rail combo that was. Excellently done. 3 0 now. And, you know, to your point, you know, halfway in, but I think with that slow start, Razy's kind of like, there might not be a clear way to win this one. Like, he would just, I, I don't even know, Dan. I mean, speculating, it could be like, yeah, he, he needs to play a longer distance game. But, like, Kilson's Man. rails looking on point. He hits that one, and then, you know, what can he do? There he does land once. There's a second one. So maybe... Raises, I'll show you how you can win this one. In fact, the third rail there we and go. Then the machine gun. All right, patience landing those shots. There is a way, but heck, can you convert with slash flame strikes out again? You have to be careful because if that's up, you can't necessarily do what we just saw right there. Yeah, and the, and the thing is, to your point, Ooh. as he goes in aggressively, actually, he tried to take the fight to Kilson, surprises him, wow. and in fact, he does. There you go. There's a great use of the slash, and it's like, well, you've been not running at me for five minutes. He didn't expect it, but to your point, 
This map isn't necessarily about using that speed because the slash is really difficult to use that speed. It's more about the angle play, and Razy's not been playing the angles particularly well until oh. now. And now the comeback is on. He just can't find the edge of Kilston there as he gets away, but with what? Eight seconds towards the heavy, and Razy's got a bit of momentum behind him. He's felt some confidence. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that was literally some kind of five-head mood, giving Kilston a little bit of a lead and some confidence because I think now Kilson's kind of asking himself, wait a second, it, what was working so well does not seem to be uh, as effective. He was using the rail, definitely LG, and of course the flame strike in several different spots. Just needs to keep at that, still up by one, about three and a half minutes remaining. Big rocket, Huge. a second follow-up, a little bit of damage coming up by Razy too, no opportunity to capitalize on that one. Uh, but that amazing split that Kilson built into these two items is now being used by Razy. The one item he yeah. started with has now been converted into an absolute multitude, and this overbearing stack of Razy is being built into this game, but Kilson's coming back into it. A good rail has equalized that stack. He's being forced away from this Mega, though. He wants to contest it so damn badly. He's Ooh. got it for the hook. He's got the flame strike, oh. and it comes out, and that'll be a certain death. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, right in the face. Eat it up. It burns the <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I understand the move by Razy, but it felt, watching it from afar, so obvious as to what was happened once Kilson started moving back in. He was waiting and hoping yeah. the Slash was going to commit, and Razy took that bait. Yeah, and it's a mistake you've got to learn from. Unfortunately, did you learn it too late uh, in yeah. the game? Because up by two, still going to be pretty tough. You know, Kilson's going to be able to use that flame defensively if need be. Uh, well, open it up with a rail. Some tribal comes out. Can't find a second one. Flames are back up here for Kilson. Razy's beginning to find a good rotation, a good pathing that he's enjoying and finding success with. Kilson, as you rightly put it now, is in a position where he's like, hmm, Maybe I just play the corner game. Yeah. Hope hope the slash comes at me and I can use my flame shot because I don't need to engage. So I don't need to give her free angles just like this. Luckily, Kilson does make that a trade, but it is damage that he can't really afford to take because he's not being able to get these major items and that pressure will continue to build. He has got a two frag buffer. Ooh. Here comes Razy. He's taking a lot of damage with the flame strike and he's actually going to go down Beautiful. himself. That probably wins Kilson the game, but Razy has a little bit more time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Kilson being a little bit more patient on that and that point, what was working out so well oh. for him early on, kind of stopped by Razy, yeah. which was a good indication that Razy was kind of adapting, but Kilson firing right back. There we go. Another big frag, two rockets, one minute left. That's probably going to result in the GG. Absolutely. And he did exactly what we were talking about. Weed. It was like, well, yeah, I can't get control, but what I can do is wait around this corner until you fly into my rockets, and I have an amazing ability that will just eliminate you. Yeah, I mean, the, the big takeaways from that is great job by Razy kind of figuring out a way to get through that that stack wall that, that Kilson had built up. But then uh, a shout out to Kilson for right, kind of realizing what Razy was doing, adjusting his game accordingly. Yeah. 30 seconds remaining. He might be able to get another frag here. But then what happens after that? Razy does get it, but actually it's a trade. So it won't matter anyway. As 20 seconds left, Razy calls the GG. And we are tied up yet again, two to two, moving on to deep embrace. The big thing for me is is the what ifs in that matchup, right? Because it felt that Razy was walking around like little lost lamb for the first five minutes of the game. No items to his name, didn't even try to pressure Kilson for a lot of it, in part because of the way in which Kilson was cutting off the angles before he could. But I definitely felt that Razy could have been more creative on the defense. It just felt that he was playing a game of staying alive rather than how do I actually take control and take the lead. So a bit of self-reflection from Razy, but it's only a 2-2 game in terms of map score. We've got a long way to go. Yeah. When we started this best of seven, it became a best of five. Yeah. Now we're back to a best of three all over again. Deep Embrace, Blood Covenant, Ruins, our last three maps. Both players definitely playing well. Welcome to the desk, Ketchup. Hello, hello, hello. But a key moment in this series, a chance for Kilson to come back online yeah. after a rough couple. Mm -hmm. And, well, importantly, that we're back to an even scenario. Oh. So as you quite rightly said, you know, having a bit of a rough start there, 
Kilson kind of just keeping that momentum as we go. Nice to know there's still life in him, you know, and that, that's, an, that's an important element to have. Yeah, it's 2-2, but he's only won one map, so he won't feel as good at this being a 2-2 mentally. I don't know. 2-2 two, two is a 2-2. Two, two. I mean, <laughs> uh, like, you, you get that map for uh, for a reason, but yeah, certainly, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it comes into mind. But uh, now we're going to shift over to Deep Embrace. So we got Kilson on the Doom and Razy on the Galena. Definitely a little bit different than what normally we might see on Deep Embrace, but will this be another map where, you know, Doom, some mobility, might be able to have a bit more utility that's beneficial? Galena is kind of good utility as well. So how do you how do you measure this one, Dan? Like Razy would definitely rather have played the Doom. I think this is the exact pairing we saw Razy versus Venga, Doom versus Galena, if I remember rightly. Um, Razy definitely prefers the Doom, but the reason you pick a Galena is, well, one, there's not a lot of champions left, to put it bluntly, so you have to have one of them. But the reason you pick a Galena over what's left on that board there is the totems in fight. You want right, to keep your right. stack high. You want to use them strategically just to make sure you can dodge back into them, retop yourself off, because this is a high combat map. I don't expect Razor to really go out of his way to search for that overstack. If you get it, great. It's a bonus. But it's about being efficient with the usage um, and a little bit of information. But from a Doom perspective, like we know what we get with that particular champion. Good mobility, causes a little bit of chaos in fights, and got the Berserk if you need it as a get out of free jail card. Um, but. I I think at the same time, too, we kind of look at the champions that are there and um, with the totems, should be quite good for Razy, who's likely going to be maybe a little bit out positioned. I think I'm kind of looking at Deep Embrace on paper and I'm thinking Doom's going to have that double jump to kind of just go from point A to point B miles faster than Galena can possibly do it outside of a rocket jump. So having that little bit of extra padding, if you will, to kind of cover his back when Kilson's more than likely going to be the one to initiate a lot of these fights, least of all with those kind of ranged rail shots that he's going to be in position for first. Uh, I think this is a good situation for Kilson. The important thing, though, is going to be to just lay that pressure on thick when the opportunity arises. Any amount of time to disengage in between those items, Razy's just going to bring himself back up to healthy, and it's just another thing that Kilson doesn't want to have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is, after this map, one of these players will most certainly be on game point, right? Razy had the opportunity to be there on a map win uh, on Insomnia. Didn't happen. We're tied back up. Whoever wins this map has a potential game point possibility and could become the Quake World Champion for Season 3. Well, it looks like we're jumping into Deep Embrace, yes, a often favorite map at this point. Thank you very much, ZSX. We might be seeing you later. Who knows? As we now jump into where things begin, an early fight is going to break out now with Kilson back in the heavy position. Such a common thing now where players will push forward early because, I mean, you're going to spawn on one side of the map each. Yep. There's no immediate rush to pick the item up. You may as well get the damage first and then pick it up later. Kilson still delaying the heavy. We yep. can see the degree of setup right now. Yep, absolutely. I mean, a little bit similar to what we saw in that start with Corrupted Keep. First totems do happen to be down. Big rocket from Kilson to open things up, following up with a rail and a second rail, and an explosive start to deep embrace here by Kilson, already up by one. That's a fantastic start if you're in Kilson's position, and he's already kind of on the hunt as we have this next cycle of items. Now, Razy is going to try and somewhat play it safe by sitting near heavy wow. side, but really nothing to be had. A heavy pickup, Razy picking up that mega because, truthfully, you have to. You can't sit around and wait at this point because Kilson has all the weapons and all the momentum. He's going to drop down, look for an opening rail. Lovely positioning for Kilson just to make sure the teleporter was there to retreat to. And I love that little maneuver. Keep yourself covered. But where are we going to go from this point on? You can see Kilson doing Kilson things, sitting in the center point of the map, listening out for Razy. But Razy will know that and trying very hard not to yeah. make some noise in return. And Kilson did get that first Whoa. frag, but what Razy's looking for is to not allow in snowball to take place. Nice double rail coming out by Kilson. Not going to be able to land a third as that mega is picked up by Razy. He's very happy that it was Ooh. there. These rails coming up by Kilson, super patient, definitely accurate and on point. And that's how he is going to try to control this top area here. As another rail comes out and he's sporting a 77% with nine shots. Brazy in the danger zone, misses that rail, but 
He recovered. The LG oh as he hops down. I'm not sure if he missed that or what, but... Oh, and another rail off the spawn. Kilson is no longer here. It's Railson. Wheat, there is nowhere Razy can go that Kilson isn't making the perfect read on. We saw it on the frag previously where Kilson fakes out the double jump, drops round on the bottom location, knows where Razy's going to retreat, catches the perfect chase down near heavy. I mean, everything Razy's trying to do to survive, Kilson just seems to be one or maybe even two steps ahead. And we said that Kilson is going to have to stick to Razy like glue. What opportunities has Razy had to actually set up anything? The rocket, knowing that wow. the totem's going to get dropped, four to zero. We're not even three minutes in. Kilson's back in this series, and then some. And that's what you need for grand finals, Ab mate. Absolutely, four zero. And I think the big problem is that Razy isn't even being given room to set anything up. Where Kilson, again, we mentioned the double jump, but it's not just the double jump. It's that rail too. 69% as he's hitting Yo, nice. a huge, huge, huge amount of those shots and uh, the ones that really count. Up by four, is there snowball potential? Yes, but Kilson in the first three minutes and 20 seconds already setting himself up nicely here on Deep Embrace. They're the frightening kind of rails, the most fearsome, the ones where Kilson, there is a split second where Razy is visible and somehow Kilson just has the angle lined up. That's the most impressive thing. I mean, he's he's not kind of reacting to it. There's this element of going around a corner and knowing that if he's there, I'll catch him. So I've already got my crosshair laid out. And it's just that degree of minute knowledge at this point. I mean, that's what world-class Quake is all about. And there's the defensive rail. Does not hit its mark there, Razy. Forced to second guess. What am I going to do here? I actually choose us to run all the way round for heavy. But... It hasn't really done anything. Kilson is on the hunt regardless. You've got to go all the way around, mate. I've got a double jump. Yeah, and then what is there for him? The mega opportunity to rocket jump up is exactly what he does. And every single time, Kilson always has a place to go to if he frags Razy, right? Like, first he's going to look for that spawn, but second of all, he knows that Razy's going to want that rail because that's going to be a key item to trying to open things up here in this matchup. Another direct rocket Whoa. a second time, too, but Razy gets the frag down just a little bit. Even Kilson surprised by that one. I'm kind of shocked. Just shy of one HP, but that's going to yeah. be swiftly healed up thanks to the totem, but... <laughs> Gotta be honest, that fight did feel a little bit fortunate for Razy. You it know, that, did. that last minute teleport, kind of mixing him up a little bit, if you will, and catching Kilson off guard. You're gonna need more than that to bring this thing back because it's still five to one. We've just hit the five minute warning and the pace of Kilson continues. Now there's gonna be one major factor and I'm kind of not surprised that Razy's still sitting around, not just for the heavy, the rail. <laughs> Kilson hasn't been able to pick up a rail yet and that has been the nightmare tool that has kept Razy behind. Ah, he sees his opponent behind him. He quickly gets out of there. More totems going down. One away from an overstack here. And now he's got to slow this down, try to open it up in a way that's going to be beneficial to him. Heavy is almost up. Mega's sitting over there just waiting to be picked up. And Razy's going to now, for the first time, be in some sort of control here of the major items. Kilson had to play it safe there. Uh, he's only got an LG and a tribolt, so knowing he didn't have the rail, knowing he didn't have the rocket launcher, sitting around on heavy, all it took was one brave push from Razy, and there was just a chance Kilson was going to get out fragged. And with this much of a lead, it's kind of not worth taking that risk. You still have four frags to work with, and it took a minute to build this whole series up. So if Kilson is able to keep this strong, cautious game plan in check, but by all means, he can take this map all the way. Another rotation of the items for another time. Razy being nice and careful, but there is going to come a point where he's going to have to pounce. Now, well, there's a little bit of damage here, but this isn't going to be the moment. Uh, oh, jump pad! No! Totem for you! Kilson gets another one! Now, is he going to try to rush this one down? He does see his opponent, does not decide to go after him. All he had was a rocket and... ALG, nice rail coming out. That heavy almost up. Kilson still up by five. Big LG damage. Rail does hit. Oh, big rocket too through that murder hole as well. No armor now on Racy's side. But Kilson takes a lot of damage there in the danger zone now. 
hitting that rail sometimes felt a little bit like a needle in a haystack. Yep. The fact that Kilson's been able to find so many of these is ridiculous in its own right, but it has been the rail that's consistently kept Razy in this not so fortunate position. Kilson, ooh, lovely rocket placement straight through the wooden holes. And now the pressure could be on the jump pad there. Razy second guessed it. Okay, never mind. Maybe yeah. I shouldn't go up here. Get some bonus spam maybe, but that's as good as we're going to get another rail to hit its mark. Thankfully now for Razy, able to get the Mega afterwards. So it's not going to be as disastrous, but now we're going to have to focus on some armor. Without armor, the rails, the rockets, the LG, everything is going to punish Razy so much heavier. And there's not much of this map left to go, Wheat. Ooh, nice oh tribal as he makes the rocket jump up. That heavy is going to be there. LG on top of the tower. Oh, and exchanging a rail right there, too. Can't follow up with the second one. Razy flashing. Hurt. Light is picked up by Kilson. Two minutes left to go. Five frags. That's a lot. Yes, there's snowball potential here on Deep Embrace, but not the way that Kilson's playing. It doesn't matter at all that uh, Kilson took a bunch of damage right there near Heavy because he got the better win. He had more options to recover. He had more options to even pick up some armor. And then there was a Mega lying in wait. That's just Kilson's plan B coming into effect. You've always got to have a backup plan for these situations. And he knew, I'll get some damage. And if I take too much damage, that's totally fine. I've got plenty of the map to fall back on. And right now, one rocket to begin. And there's the rail out of nowhere. A minute and a half. Four frags needed, technically possible, but it's going to be one hell of a comeback if Razy can get this. It would be one hell of a comeback, but he's going to try to go for it. Rail through the back, a second rail up the uh -oh. jump pad. Six to three, minute 15 in order to make something happen. Knows his opponent doesn't have a rail, but spawned over by that LG. Then we're going to have the heavy picked up on the top. LG versus LG. Oh, no. Kilsa does go down. Very, very low, though. Razy's got to be careful here. He's uh, hanging out in the back hallway. Two frags and one minute in order to make those up. 50 seconds right as Razy picks up a fresh mega health. And with that light armor, these rails make me very nervous with what's on the line here. This is the opportunity to break away, to put yourself onto championship point. And only two frags for Razy lies in the balance. Kilson has to play this so carefully. A Berserk is ready. Might be used for an emergency escape, but it won't be until the last closing minutes. You're going to be stuck in melee for a set time. That's not what you want right now. The Mega is about to spawn, but I don't think Razy even has time to go for it. No, he did finally catch a glimpse of where his opponent was. Nice rail. He's going to make the rocket jump up. He does, but the LG's there. Oh, it was a big baby. risk. He had to take it. The rail from Kilson. That will seal the deal on the game you know i all right why did crazy rocket jump? he had to there had to be an opportunity to try to get that frag back kilson uh so elegantly avoiding the situation yeah and the fact that he gets that win with a doom slayer that's currently wearing the belt, the belt. in game that's a message to send you see that that's going to be mine soon or maybe not but i gotta say yeah, that play near the end, you're right. If Razy didn't rocket jump there, it was over. You yeah. can't chase him, can't yeah. get it in time. You can't, you can't even get up that jump pad would have been a bigger risk than right. a surprise rocket right. jump. So yeah. sometimes you just have to go for it, but Kilson had just done such an amazing job early and we have got to give a shout out to those world famous rail shots. There's a reason people call Kilson Railson. You saw a perfect example for that right now. And just look at these replays, right? Five to zero when we were oh. about halfway through. The yeah. amount Razy had to do to come back, I mean, it's a miracle he got so close. Uh, yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I completely agree as well. And Razy, th that could have been much worse. It could have been 10 at one stage, considering how bad of a spot he had to be. <laughs> put himself in if under defensive stance to try and recover. It was so, so difficult. And Kielsen, I kind of feel like all of a sudden he's come to life. And this is going to be dangerous, sorry, dangerous territory here for Razy. But now we're coming to the map cycle where Razy has a lot more space, but of course, a lot more rail action from Kielsen's sure. end. So yeah. it may be present comes from both sides, but yeah, it'll be interesting if we do get to these uh, both maps, not just one. I mean, I'm not going to lie, folks. I'm looking at that map that we're coming up to next, Blood Covenant. We are obviously entering a dimension where there's only a little bit left. You don't have a lot of champions to choose from, and I think Kilson might be on the slightly negative side of that because Razy gets to go in with a conventional champion in Visor. Ice and on Blood Covenant, I mean, it wouldn't be a first pick, would it? Uh, it really wouldn't. Uh, no. So you're going up against someone who has the same stack as you, slightly better movement, and at the same time, I mean, 
the piercing sight, man. I mean, that just has such a huge benefit for players on Blood Covenant because it's super rail heavy. It can be super ambush heavy. You know, you can see where people spawn. It does everything. Yep. And you've just yeah. got a little turret that might not do much. I I'm mean, a bit worried. The, you know, Kilson now being on game point. He wins this next match. He is the season three champion. I don't think either of these players, I mean, Razy has no choice. He's got to win this game, force it to a final game. If that happens, the interesting thing is of Sorlag and Kiel, which of these players has played that champion on that map this weekend, right? Like maybe in the past, but suddenly there's this sort of unpracticed thing this weekend. And there's also the talking point of Kiel was not picked. Kiel was the last one left. So true. By purest definition, the last choice. <laughs> but the thing is, though, the kill pick on ruins isn't that bad. It used to be quite good. The fact you can use those pineapples around the T junction on Mega, the heavy especially, right. so easy for them to try and bag that. And just find a couple just to be on the safety side. You know, even on courtyard, a fair traps find some of those pineapples to kind of move them a bit into your advantageous position. There's a lot of things you can do yeah. with that. But obviously, we need to get to that point. Of course, we have right. to focus on exactly. blood and, exactly. and the visor, you know, definitely more of a viable option here. Absolutely. Well, we're moving on to the sixth map, and that means Kilson is on game point. It is currently three to two in our grand final of Kilson versus Razy. Map seven, should we go to it, will be on ruins, but Blood Covenant is first. Razy's tournament life is on the line. He has already made second place, but he said, Lethal, I don't want second place. If he wants to crawl past this, he has got to defeat Kilson here on Blood Covenant. He certainly does, but Visor is still a decent pick considering the champion pool he had left remaining. So this could be Razy's time to get these two maps back to back and claim the title for himself. As now currently Mega's up in its couple of seconds and look at the hits here. We Razy in a better spot for this Mega and if he grabs this and then instantly goes for the heavy, he can try and contest that at the exact same time. But at the same time as well, Razy just been a little bit cautious with that decision to either just go for the Mega or just try and fool Kilson in some way. Coming around the corner. That turret waiting for him right there. Kilson did grab that heavy. And, uh, you know, Rick Hilson had a pretty mighty rail on that last map. Let's hope he packed it in his suitcase and brought it over here to Blood Covenant because I do think that rails are going to help decide the winner of this one. Kilson can close it out right here. He's been wanting that championship for a while. Razy's no different. And everything's on the line here with Kilson and Game Point. Good rails from both players, but Razy's going to take the risk here, but will he be able to survive and get the heavy? Yes, he does. And now does a little bit of heavy machine gun damage and the rail as well. Kielsen is on the back foot. Razy's on the hunt looking to try and track him down, but of course he's just directly oh. above. And I love that as well, just eating the lights away. Going to yeah. go through and now he has the chance to get the mega and Kielsen knows this. Yeah, absolutely. Kielsen's still fairly low. And although Razy doesn't have the most respectable stack in the world, he will grab that Mega. Piercing Sight comes out, does exactly where his opponent is at, but it doesn't matter. He uses it to push away and zone his opponent so he can grab that heavy. He's focusing on that item control to see if he can't help him net that first frag. Nice rail from Kilson as we're two minutes in, zero to zero. And you saw that as well. The turret gave a little bit of info on where Razor could be lurking. And Kielsen got a clear eye view around that hourglass area. And Razor now just holding the angles once again. Knows that he can't go for the Mega and doesn't want to risk taking too much damage. As if he does drop for the Heavy and he's already consumed one rail, then it could be curtains for him and giving Kielsen that first frag. As both players now just playing oh. it a lot slow as he's just directly underneath. Yep. And uh, I thought he might just rocket jump up there, but no, there's likely, I don't know if he dropped his turret up there. But he's waiting for him from the corner. Oh, catch him with the LG, 100 damage right off the bat. Doesn't decide to go in for the kill. That just doing that damage is enough. And that's gonna make Kilson make a split decision on where he wants to go. Oh, what a great rail there from Kilson just to wow. try and knuckle down on the stack and 
Oh, you saw that. It got a little bit dicey, but just throwing those audio cues about here and there, basically saying to Razy, I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared to just push on up by any means. Just finding that time it back down and Mega's up in the next couple of seconds. But I love the prioritization of these hourglasses as well to make sure to have consistent reads every single time. And Megan Heavy, Mega's been up for at least five to seven seconds now. Heavy's only just come up, but it looks like there is uh, going to be a GA in terms of going for each other's items. So almost in sync again, so we won't see full map control for a while. Another incredibly intense game where the mind games are present. Neither player really wanting to commit using the full utility that their champs have. Oh narrowly missing that rocket as Mega is about up, but these items are so close to one another, separated by three seconds. And now Razy still just directly underneath. We're already approaching the halfway stage. I'm getting the Juan Tox flashbacks at uh -oh. the moment as he's he is trapped, but Razy should be okay if he can at least get that first rail in. And Kilson knows that he's still there. Look at that. Good read from Kilson. Just getting ready to try and Ferrari peek away from the rockets to try and catch at least one rail onto Razy. But Kilson just biding his time, listening for his audio cues, using the tri up to see if he can get a little bit of damage in both items again. Been up for a while. Yeah, immediately. Goes down, and he didn't immediately go for that heavy. Sees him on top. Kilson's immediately just going <laughs> to turn around and say, cool, I'm going to go grab the Mega. And again, the respect lethal of these two. We're halfway through. 0-0. Zero, zero. Not an uncommon score that we have seen here on Blood Covenant, and even more so considering what is at risk and what is on the line. Potentially a championship win for Kilson. Razy's tournament life for him. I love that from Kilson trying to potentially dive on in with the turret to consume some of that damage. Good first rail there from Kilson. Razy's just straight up out of there. And Mega Ooh. is up. He's got to be careful here. Just trying to abuse the map geometry of these pillars. Does get the Mega. Kilson looking to try and go for another one. As Kil Look how patient Razy wow. is with that rail just to try and hit one of his shots and Kilson preemptively rocket in around that light, but Razy knows better than that and goes for the other one instead. Oh, I like that though. Turning back around, we'll be able to pick up those vials. Let's take a see what Kilson is up to here. As I think he thought his opponent might have gone underneath, head over that heavy, he realized that's not the case, so he's gonna grab that. While Razy is likely to grab that Mega, which he does. And, uh, you know, Rail's been very key, key here, but uh, neither players really wanted to show themselves to even let their opponent hit rails. And Razy now just continuing to be very patient. Kills is just walking around bottom mega to see what he can find. Both of them have no info on each other, but you know what? That piercing side could come in handy, but instead comes for the TP and Razy was more than ready for that approach. As Razy right now Ooh. still got a slightly bigger stack as Pearson Sight is coming up in the next 15 seconds and the Mega has been delayed again by Kilson. Right, but I think that was smart too, knowing like, hey, I could put myself out here, my land a rail could get hit by one, it's okay, I can go back and grab that Mega. It's exactly what he does, but gets tagged with another one. Does Razy sense an opening? Turret is up. Turret is down now, another rail coming out. The tribal, Razy definitely looking for an opportunity here. He's got the armor stack. Kilson's hurting. Rocket jumps up, then the jump pad, trying to fake out Kilson, and Kilson's just gonna head on over and grab that mega. Razy's creating some good flanks, but instead Kilson's got plenty of time to kind of rotate round or get away. This is gonna be the issue, but Razy does take that last rail. He's not going to be up for a little bit of time, but neither is the Mega Eva. Does have the piercing sight once again. Two minutes and 15 left. Knows he's at the rail now from that trying button, of course, with the piercing sight. Looking to see what the best situation could be for himself in order to approach that heavy and also get some damage done. But as you're trying to take out that turret, Kills and had eyes on him. 
Couple of missed rockets. Kielsen directly underneath him, but the turret's been a little bit of a pain. That does mean that oh. Kielsen will get that heavy. Nice little strategy there from Kielsen. Novik is on limited time. He's trying to go for the Mega at the same time. Razy heard that oh. straight away. Just tanked that last rail. Does pick up the Mega, but wow. this is Kielsen's opportunity. Wow. This is going back to back rails. Still somehow alive. Just barely, but the light will stop him from being available. And Razy just needs to get out of there. Yeah, fix the rocket. Trying to provide Razy with some wrong information here. A rail would be huge. Potentially set up a potential here for that first frag. We also could go right into sudden death here. I don't think either player necessarily wants that added pressure to things, but it might be the only choice. They both have one minute, 10 seconds left on the clock. Kilson with the better stack. Grabs another rail. He hit three phenomenal rails lethal earlier on. Razy still kind of recovering from that. Very, very close one on that one. Heavy's about up. Kielsen still got full map control. Razy needs to side, try and get some chip damage, but it's Kielsen still continuing with these rails, and Kielsen still has the angle there. Razy's actually playing is quite risky and wants to try and attempt to go for this rail, but I love this as well. Putting on a bit more pressure, has picked up the Mega, but Kielsen is still at the bottom, knows not to go up that jump pad. It's basically dangerous territory for Ooh. him, but that was a decent rocket there as Razy having to try and get away as Kielsen still trying to find out more info with that tripod. Goes oh. in, almost gets it with Darrell, goes through the TP, back and forth. I don't know what's going to happen here. 7 HP, still playing oh alive. My. Both of them are so weak. Trying to finish it with the shoddy, but neither player wants to go for it. So tempting. Oh. How on earth was there no kill from either side? It Unbelievable little dance there through the teleporter. I, I definitely clenched a little bit. Razy still trying to recover from that one. And there's the time, sudden death. The next map will either determine whether we go to a final map or if we have a new champion here in season three. Oh, oh Kelson attacked with that rail. And Kelson now, will he be able to stay alive at this point? Still into sudden death. And if he just makes the wrong peak, or pushes out too far, and that's him done. If Heavy is up, Razy, of course, going to go for it uncontested. As Kielsen's still looking for some lights, but he's got the piercing sight. He hits the first shot. He's going to push straight on forward, but the problem is he's already picked up the Mega here. Still hasn't found any armor to his name. Razy desperately trying to get this first and, of course, last frag, but the light has already been picked up, and Kielsen's slowly being able to recover. I mean, we could see another 10 minutes away that they are playing right now. <laughs> it is I'm it's fine with super that. intense. I mean, to think about how close both of them came to death through that teleporter dance uh, is just unbelievable. Love to see that one in slow mo <laughs> again. <but laughs> one minute in I'll now. Both players looking pretty good on their stacks. They'll swap the items yet again. Piercing Sight's about to be back up. Oh, quite a while. Until next turret. This is the first rail, but Kilson still trying to use that tribal to full effect. But look how aggressive Razy is here. I'm liking this play, and Kilson is going to get a little bit worried here with the pressure that Razy's putting on at the moment. But does back away, does take down that turret. Kilson still directly above him, picking up the hourglasses, piercing oh. sight in the next 12 seconds. He may just have to let him get a mega, but Heavy is still up, and Razy's just running his best as he can. But Kilson, he's already oh. done a lot of LG damage. Oh. Will that take oh him down? God. Yes, he does. And it does not like we're going to the final map. It took 12 maps, 12 minutes rather. I can't speak, but how long was he waiting for that opportunity? I can't believe that was how it ended. Unbelievable. The patience there, the mental fortitude and all of that. I totally get where Kilson was coming from. He had the potential rocket jump to the momentum, but you never want to be in the air and have your opponents. <laughs> no. LG pointed at you. It was lit. And you know what? It was at that point, that first cell hit. I'm certain that Kilson thought, shoot, I probably just lost that game because of that. Just that one moment. Guys, that one moment at the teleporter down towards Heavy Machine Gun. Oh how, my God. how did it not end there? They both got out like... With Look at this. Five. Oh, we don't get to see the entire thing, but they both got out with five to ten points of health, and then they still are looking for the angle, and here we go, the final float. Razy, all tied 
up, it all comes down to the next one. But Kilson should have taken that battle, should have won that battle. He should have. With the stack he had. I, I do agree, but you know what? It, it, it ha you know, it, the telefry, like all sorts of different things can go <laughs> wrong in that situation. I think that Razy probably went through and was hoping to go back through for an escape. I don't even know if Kilson was expecting that to happen, right? It's like, I think about the number of decisions that were made just in that two yeah. second period of time. And I think both of them we're probably looking at their own health going like, oh my God, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, didn't realize that like, no, they both dished out a lot of damage to one another. And they were both still looking at each other, like just by a <laughs> fraction, like a frame. And I still could, they were so tempted. But the thing is, though, Kilson, that one rail could have won in the championship. That's the crazy thing. Yeah. But going into this last map, also Razy looking good with that kill pick. I agree. I agree, we were actually talking about it uh, behind the scenes at the Sex and I, and he was like, wait, you favor Keel over Sorlek on this matchup? And that was a good well, impression of him. <laughs> I, 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 well I was being very, very polite, very yeah. generous in that impression. But we were talking about it, and there's definitely people who would favor Keel in this matchup. Why? Because those grenades can help so much in a number of choke points. Because on the one hand, yes, Ruins, it's a larger map, it's got quite a few open spaces, that is not where Keel shines, but... Think of the choke point near the Mega. We I, think of the heavy area. That, it, think it, of the rail, the LG. There's several areas where those grenades really do shine. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure then all of the sore lag lovers are like, yeah, but I can zone with my spit. I can, like, set things up. I can, But, you know, I do tend to agree with you. I think that the grenades can be much more punishing, can zone just as well, a little bit different, right? There's a solution to the spit. That's right, right. right? And that's like, uh, whereas there's not always a solution if a well-placed grenade. I mean, we did see Chain earlier, not only use that as a zoning, but ultimately earning himself a frag, different map, but an example of how that could happen. Now, on the flip side, Kilson's got some nice air control yes. as some speed so i don't know how this one breaks down flea but i am so stoked that we are going to the final game we are tied three to three and it all comes down to this chat make some noise i want to see some focus 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 for kilson i want to see some razy 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 let us hear it it all comes down to this these three days of grueling matches one map to decide it all Oh, around the corner, big rocket to open things up. Crazy, no armor stack left. And I don't know that we're going to get much. It might be slow, but I think it'll be a calculated game. And then when the opportunities arise, we're going to see an explosive action coming out. Already using those grenades for a little bit of zoning, but great rail coming out from Kilson. Razy already on the back foot, going to be heading down. Mega has not been picked up, still being held on. Huge delay. There it is. That is a massive gap. Oh! oh! Not expecting it. Probably not even knowing where his opponent was. And Kilson's on the board with one. I was not expecting Razy to stick around when he was railable. He was so close to just getting over that threshold, but apparently didn't feel confident to pick up one of those health levels up there. Now Kilson attempting to zone a bit with the toxic spit. Nice spread between the items too. We eat 10 seconds between Mega and Heavy, and that favors the more mobile one of the two, and that is Kilson. Yeah, I mean, look at these rails already coming out. Look at that stack that we're already seeing. Uh, and then down below, yeah, we do have the grenades coming out, but big opportunity, huge rockets, huge rockets, but Razy, very, very low. The rocket to finish him up. Kilson now with his second frag. He wants to set the tempo of this one. He wants to use that speed to his advantage. Spit comes out as he drops down to that heavy. Still a long time before that one spawns, but can head on over to the Mega. It is about ready to go, and he cannot get there in time. That's going to go to Razy. Razy is relentless in his aggression right now. Spawns, gets a decent stack because he's a heavy tank. He picks up LG, and he charges in, pushes. Kills and manages to outmaneuver him, but still, Razy applying constant pressure, has secured Mega, now takes himself heavy too. All he needs is one good rail to open things right. up fully. Yeah, I mean, with, and the tables are turned right here in this situation. Gonna grab some hourglasses, have a spit ready again. Razy with a great stack. Kilson waiting just above that jump pad. Knows the timing of that heavy. 
think heard his opponent drop down, decides to go ahead and get that light. And, you know, a couple of grenades getting eaten down there, and suddenly you're not so you're not so sure about going in there. Mm hmm I like that play from Kilson. Just preempting Razy going through the teleporter, laying down some of that spit, making sure that if you do go through, you have to waste another few seconds to get a bubble, nullify the effect of that AoE. Kilson also starting things off with an 80% rail. Those first few shots were immaculate, and there it's going to be one answered back by Kilson and a set or by Razy, and a second one coming out as well. Suddenly, Sorlag trying to get out of there. Opponent knows exactly where Kilson is at this point, and so things slow down. The back hallway, an explosive start for Kilson. He'd be happy to keep this lead. Still very early in the game, Wheat. Not yeah. even four minutes in. Kilson absolutely cannot just plus back and be on the defensive for the entirety of this map. He needs to still show presence. He needs to challenge Razy on the items. Not necessarily go all in, not even attempt to take them for himself, but he needs to consistently swindle down that stack of his opponents. Ooh, good positioning there by Kilson. Mm -hmm. Can't really get a shot or make it happen. Razy does catch the foot of his opponent there, peeking out of the side, heard him go up that jump pad, and Razy just right now controlling all of the major items. Fortunately, there we go, first damage. Not the first damage, but opening up with this particular cycle with the rail. This is the situation in which the Sorlex shines, though. A frag lead, significantly faster and more nimble than the opponent. Yeah. Kilson is doing a very good job at being evasive, at being slippery. Reading Razy perfectly. And all Razy's been able to do is land a few rails here and there, but more often than not, Kilson responds in kind. Nice rocket. Yeah, I like that by Kilson, right? Setting up is like if my opponent's gonna go ahead and be on a rotation, how can I break that a little bit? LG from the top to the mid. Both players doing a lot of damage. Gonna commit to this one, and Kilson takes it with a third frag, five minutes in. A little surprised to see that one. Thought that Razy might have the advantage there, but Kilson held his ground and nicely done. Absolutely. 18 points of health. That was all separating him from death. And now Razy has to focus on recollecting those crucial weapons. We doesn't have everything in his arsenal that he needs to challenge Gilson. And in doing so, he's basically giving Gilson so much time, so much freedom to start that own cycle of the major items. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned the fact that the Sorglag likes to be a few frags up and where it gets really scary is when that time begins to tick away. Kilson's also landing his rails. He's not going to give you that room. He's been aggressive with his rails. He's been defensive with his rails. So you've got to deal with those and these nice. flicks that are coming out from Kilson. He was at 80% before. He's still at 75 flea. Railgun is really what has given Kilson that leg up in this fight. This could have gone so differently if Kilson had not landed 80% rail in those opening few minutes, and Razy had instead retaliated with that same intensity to get himself a lead. Ooh. Peeked down, saw his opponent, had the rocket launcher out, wasn't a whole lot he could do, but said, don't want to be here. Six minutes, 40 seconds. And what does Razy do Kilson now not giving him the opportunity to really make any sort of a moves. He might have to chase this one. Does go up the jump pad. Eats a lot of LG damage. Kilson though, a little bit low. Razy still with a decent stack. Another LG battle. Somehow Kilson is actually just Ooh. winning these fights. All oh, rail misses. This is an opportunity uh -oh. for Razy. Can he get away? Uh -oh. Yes. First frag on the board for Razy. Took a fair bit of damage. Gilson spawns on a small armor as well, but it's Razy who is first on top of the Mega. No, he actually decides to drop down instead, prioritize the heavy. No, Rocket Jumps back up, Razy! Uh, just trying to go for both of them. A big opportunity there to try to get that, but yeah. read it nicely, knew that that was probably where Kilson was going. Wasn't really in a position to do that damage. Did try to stop from that LG, and ooh, big damage. 
With that LG, he drops back down. That was a risky move, but he managed to get out of there. Seven minutes, 45 seconds. That's still the time's ticking away. Two frag lead through the teleporter. Spit comes down as well, delaying Razy a little bit more. Heavy taken by Kilson. Mega goes to Razy. Kilson with a slight stack advantage at this point. Plus two frags of a lead and a significantly faster champion. This is an uphill battle for Razy to be sure. Absolutely. Here's his opponent above him. Has a lot of different ways can exit up that jump pad. Typically pretty safe to stay up there if your opponent has to go up. Now right above him, Spit is ready. Minute and 30, 90 seconds away from potentially being the champion. One of the biggest issues that Razy is facing right now is that there's no time between the items. Yep. And this late in the game, Weed, he doesn't have the opportunity to start offsetting them either. He can't just sit around and delay it for 15 seconds because with a minute left on the clock, he needs to make something happen and he needs to make it happen now. Yep. Now Kilson aimed outside that teleporter exit. Some of that stack ticking down, but Kilson is not going to give Razy an inch. It could be a strategic win here for the final game after an explosive two frags at the beginning, less than 45 seconds remaining. Kilson looking for his plus back victory here. He has fought so hard all weekend long, lost that very first map. People wondered if he could make it to here, Flea. 30 seconds remaining. And it may end like this, where Razy's gonna go in for the attack. Spit comes out, he's gotta make the shots. He can't, he's so low. Kilson has plenty of stack, it ticks away. And Razy says, GG. And Kilson is your Quake World Champion for season three, winning this one down, taking it to the wire, four to three. Razy picking up another second place, but Kilson is your champion. And look at him, the enthusiasm, the excitement, the relief. This was an extremely hard fought battle, but he gets to claim the belt and what a beautiful prize it is. Kilson, congratulations. It was uh, hard fought, you think, especially after that uh, Blood Covenant game that came down to the wire, the crazy, crazy teleporter. It obviously slowed down a bit there on Ruins, but you know there's an age-old saying when it comes to competitive gaming, and that is that you have got to play to win, and that is exactly what Kilson did. Whenever he is ready, we'll bring him down to the desk to see how he feels. Congratulations to Kilson. Thank you. Dan, welcome to Desi. You, you got a question <laughs> here for Kilson? Uh, I've got a statement first before a question, which is. Oh my uh, God. Yeah, Kiel, hey? Oh, <laughs> oh the shade. The, the, the yeah, shade. He knows what I'm talking about. I, I just want to say that behind the scenes, we went around and we asked who's going to win. Everyone said Razy except for me. I said Kilson. Well done. And that well happened. Done. There Th we go. Thanks, there we go. Thanks wow. for believing. I need to clap the back. The double <laughs> shade. The double shade. But forget all uh. that. Kilson, you did it. You brought it back. You had such a remarkable regular season. Came in as the number one seed. Uh, you know, you had that first game uh, uh, and and or that first series, and you lost that map there. And you know, I'm sure there are some people like I don't know. Like Kilson doesn't look like he's in great shape, but here you are holding the belt. Uh, I know this is what you expect of yourself. You worked so hard, but tell us, right, after a long series that went all the way, were you a little bit nervous going into that final game on Ruins, and how were you thinking about that matchup? Like, I, I really, I wasn't, uh, I didn't know what to expect at all because <laughs> we didn't play this matchup a single time offline. That's, right. that's just the thing. So I knew I, I was just like thinking Sorlek, his movement, yeah, works well on ruins. So I'm gonna pick him. 
Um, but I wasn't sure about Kiel. Like you can also set up quite good uh, traps on uh, on ruins with Kiel. So um, it kind of got me worried a bit. But in the beginning, like I kept hitting my rails, rail after rail, and yeah. Then I ex I I had the exact idea like what he's gonna do next, and yeah, that totally played uh, yeah played him uh, outplayed him and. Uh, yeah, I mean, found him exactly in the in the in the spots where I wanted him to be, and then he needed to to haunt me. And yeah, yeah you're haunting a saw like on mm. on the ruins. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's kind of lame that kind of play style, <laughs> but I mean, I I did it for a reason, you know. That's what you have to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you know it wasn't lame as all of these other incredible matches that we had going into it. I mean, you had the one map advantage. Did you expect that it was going to go the distance? I uh, clearly you were responsible respecting one another in these matchups we were watching it and it was like we were commenting an amazing amount of respect but did you think it was going to go all the way to that final map i mean that there, there's always it's quick champions always the possibility and sure. i also saw like Razy has been stepping out up his gameplay uh, since we uh, since i played him so i knew he's gonna gonna come here even stronger i was like putting my bet a little that he's kind of feeling a bit a little exhausted but he didn't at all so he still kept uh, landing his shots, you know, and playing, playing really patient, really, uh, yeah, he always knew what to do. So he made it quite difficult. And, uh, you know, on any other, other day, it, this, this could be his. And I'm, you know, shit, he's, he's second again. It's kind of, really, it's, I can't believe, like, uh, that, that I made it, really. You made it's, it. You sure yeah. did. Gilson, I just want to ask, how close do you feel that this is to your top performance? This is a question that I know we've asked in the past, and you're always like, I'm at 90%, 95% of what I'm capable of. What was this? I mean, we we all have seen my fail on DM6, right? <laughs> <laughs> we did see that, we did see that, yeah. I, I could have just clicked uh, like uh, ESC, uh, ESC and uh, click respawn, would have been the same effect, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's not not like the I mean at QuakeCon three years ago I was at like one hundred twenty percent and right. and right now I mean I've I've been at one hundred for such a long time now throughout the stage and you know I I just got the one hundred just in time and uh, yeah to make it to make it happen actually okay and uh, maybe there were a few moments even there was like the hundred one hundred five because my readings overall were actually quite uh, quite well and. Uh, yeah, that's that's something that is uh, not so easy to pull off when you're mm. sitting at home and mm. right, uh, yeah. you know just in front of your your PC and it's a different feeling. Absolutely. Well, congrats again, Kilston. Well Thank played. You. Uh, you mentioned you're at a hundred now, and I think like <laughs> you've you've put yourself onto the belt again for the second time, I believe. And you know you're reaching that level of of in time. terms of. Is it? Oh gosh! <laughs> All right. How, how dare you? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually move around. Right? Third time, so you're up there with the level of the rapper. So my question builds on that: is what is what is next for Kilsey? You know, what what do the people at home expect to see over the next six months, year? Where are you going to take this forward? Can you be 120 again? Where are we going to go? I mean, that's that's for sure where I want to be. Like, I I felt the game so much three years ago. Knew every step my opponents are gonna make, and if they didn't appear in a certain amount of time, I knew exactly they're gonna take some some other route. And I ex exactly knew what kind of route they, they're actually going. And uh, I I could time every every single route like to the second, and knew every move. So that's where I would like to be again. So uh, I'm always always looking for that kind of thing. I'm not sure if it's ever gonna happen again. Um, that was like. I was just in the zone there, um, but uh, yeah, even now, like I've been, I've been in the zone. Like I, I knew what to do, and uh, yeah, made made it work. Yeah, yeah. nice one. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the state of this tournament, right? As the winner, I think that you have a really probably great temperature uh, in terms of one of the things that we've been saying, and we've said, wow, this is clearly one of the best tournaments that we've seen from day one all the way to the end. You know, no one was quite sure what might happen. There was absolutely a lot of open avenues for upsets and surprises. Would you agree as champion of season three that this was one of the most sort of uh, diverse and, and uh, talent-filled tournaments that we've seen in Quake Champions? Mm. On, on the one hand, yes. Uh, I mean, some some guys have been have been increasing in skill, um, but 
Yeah. Also, 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 also the, the the game has changed a little bit. Sure, sure. Some some players might not have been able to adjust as quickly as others. That's that's how I would say it. It's not like that they are all uh, shrunk together uh, that much. It's just that some had like really big time issues uh, to adjust to how it plays here on land. And I think a lot comes down to that because all of us were a little surprised. So what you're saying is that there is a level above this. We just have to wait for it. And we'll uh, get absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right. So I can live with that. So I hear that more lands, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. yeah. Must be. Must be. <laughs> Gentlemen, any other for questions? I just want to know, like, to correct myself now, third time, <laughs> is this the sweetest one for you? Yeah, absolutely is. Yeah, really. Uh, I, I have to say, because of all the work I put in, like it's it's such a relief to to be able to hold this belt right now in my hands. Uh, you can't imagine. Like uh, I, I could literally cry right now. That's that's how I feel. How over overwhelming this is to to achieve this because I sacrificed so much time into practicing. Um, I I started practicing uh, so early before the stage even started. Um, you know, with the mindset of defeating Rafa, that was my first goal of of the QPL uh, stage, and uh, I made it. I made it happen. Then I had a little, a little knockdown uh, by Wenger, um, and came back up again. And uh, yeah, all all the way. Like it was so much work. It was so much sacrifice and uh, so much so much support from from everyone. You know, like my girlfriend, my uh, my son, me um, also. I mean, I had to sacrifice time with, time with him because mm -hmm. I had to practice, especially last three weeks. Before the tournament, uh, he had like holidays from school and everything, and uh, yeah, you know, like it's it's one crying eye, one loving eye. And yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. a good way. So yeah, that's and that's actually actually how I feel. Like, <laughs> right. yeah. just to build on that, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to? Anyone you want to thank? Clean in the camera, because you're clearly talking about people that mean a lot to you. So here's your chance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I want to thank uh, the Kilton fam, the the big fam, like uh, you know, always always supporting. Big uh, big thanks for for the chat. Uh, you know, always believing in me, even sometimes I'm I'm not delivering. Um, and and uh, yeah, you know, always, always, always supporting, believing. I mean, big my girlfriend, my family. Um, yeah, my son. Uh, yeah, he, he's also been wearing like at home. Uh, has been wearing uh, my jersey. <laughs> so uh, you know, cheering for me. It's 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 so so. It's just crazy, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, th thank you, everyone. If I missed any anyone, so I'm sorry about it. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just speechless. That's uh, that is okay. You just became the Quake World Championship or champion for season three once again. Congratulations, Kilson. <laughs> Hard fought battle through and through, and you absolutely deserved it. So thank you once again. I know you probably want to go and celebrate and take a breather, and you can do that right now. Uh, thank you again so much. Good job, buddy. Good job. Thanks. Congratulations. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it. Watch as the champion walks off with his belt there. Nicely done once again. Took it to the final game of the last series. So incredible what we saw here. Flea and Dan, thanks so much. It's been amazing. Obviously, want to give a shout out to the other broadcasters as well. Catch up. I want to give a shout out to Lethal. Also want to give a big shout out to Forty. Couldn't be here with us, but was holding it down over on the B stream. Was in chat the whole time, rooting along the way. Big thank you to PGL, Bethesda, all of the players, the fans, those challengers that brought it here. And we can't wait to do it again. Thank you so much for joining us over the course of three days. It's been absolutely amazing. Go check out Play Quake. Let this be your motivation. You could be standing right there, but you got to beat Kilson first. Thanks so much for joining us on behalf of everyone here, the talent, the production crew, in Bethesda, the Quake team. Thank you so much, chat. You've been good. I hope you behaved yourself. We will see you next year. We're out of here. Peace.